Hi, so the 11th book that I've read this year is called The Temps. It's by uh, Andrew DeYoung, who's an author I've never heard of before. Um, the prompt is set in a workplace. Um, this book was wild. Um, I liked it from the start. Um, it did get a little bogged down, but it's a very short book. So it's like, I think it's like, I don't know, maybe 250 pages or something um, in that range. So it didn't get like the the evil middle is what i call it um where things sort of like get bogged down and there isn't a big transition you're just be basically waiting for the third act wasn't too long um i sort of like can't give a really a big hmm if i give a plot hmm I mean, it might make it more interesting for you to read, but then again, it's giving away, basically, if you describe anything in it. It's basically a massive corporation like, say, Amazon, kind of, that sort of level, um, except they're not selling things, they're selling data. Okay. Um, which is freaky, but part of reality right now. And... Um, Basically, um, in the beginning, it's it's a story of uh, temp workers in this place and how there is a hierarchy within the work um, um, environment for temporary versus. And I worked as a temp for years. Um, well, not years, but a while. I felt like years. That's the thing. I think it was a temp for like less than six weeks, but it felt like years. And this actually catch, captures that pretty good. And there was like a huge company wide meeting where um, uh, basically all of the full time employees had to go to this meeting and the temps did not. And the thing is that, uh, you know, that sound, might sound crazy, but in my personal experience, yes, that actually happened to me like a couple decades ago. I worked for a bank and there was like this big huge bank meeting and I was in the accounting department and because everybody had to be at that meeting and I was a temp and I couldn't be there they stuck me as reception for the entire bank for like two hours it was weird um answering phones and being like oh, I had no idea about any of the structure of who people needed to talk to or anything luckily I didn't get that many calls and not many people came through the door but I was like whoa I was working in accounting I had nothing to do with all that anyway um so that's very realistic um and then during this meeting basically uh the world explodes and there are um attacks simultaneously all over the place um and it's a it's chemical where where chemical warfare so because this place is so you know I, I, you know uber moneyed and paranoid the owner was paranoid um this place somehow had um the the air system sealed and it had its own like electricity generating capacity and everything else so when the world collapsed the building itself the people survived but you know the the people that were official employees were not in the building because they were at this meeting and so everybody died so it's basically just like this bunch of temps um each doing a different thing and not really knowing what's going on with this um you know this company or anything happening in the world at all and um then it basically turns into like a modern um lord of the flies type situation um so it was an interesting concept um i keep saying i'm um, sorry because i'm trying to think it through I would say for the writing, the biggest sort of idea that I would expect somebody that could pull from this is to look at the plotting. 
Now, plot is what happens, but it's also um, how it's told, who tells the plot, and um, the chronology, which is, the thing is, that this book felt very like it was a chronological, chronological book, like it was, you know, this happened, and then this happened, and this happened, but there were actually like a bajillion um, flashbacks and time jumps, and but it didn't feel that way. It was really interesting. Also, I would look at how the chapters end. There were a couple of chapters that were just straight up cliffhangers, but you know, like for, if you study poetry, for example, I mean, poetry is the line. It's where the line ends. If you have, you know, that's what distincts, that's the distinction of a poem from say a paragraph or any other type of writing is that there are these line breaks that are distinctive and are specific and chosen by the author. Um, and that's very much like what this book's chapter ends were like. I really felt that they were very, very deliberate um, because there were breaks within the chapter sometimes. Sometimes the chapters were just more like one straight chapter. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if this author had, uh, studied screenwriting, um, because of, for example, in screenwriting, the three acts that are almost, almost exclusively, um, in every movie, sometimes you get double, like for example, Titanic is actually two movies back to back. And it's really obvious that there are two movies back to back and each one has three acts. Um, but the, the major acts are either they're designated almost always by either a time shift or a place shift, um, or timing shift or something like that. And with a major sort of revelation at that time. And these chapters work like that. That's seemingly where the breaks were. They, they were dependent on if they were going to move from one location to another or another from one time to another. That's where the chapter breaks were. It was really interesting um, because it was, it was non-consistent and it was really obvious. And I mean, you know, it totally worked for this book. Um, this book was outrageous. Um, again, this is what I mean by a book that would be, I, I don't know when it was written. I mean, it's new, it's just came out. So, um, but I'm pretty sure that this is one of these books that was sort of informed by the pandemic experience because that's what they are. They're in lockdown in this you know, together in this thing, but it's not a pandemic. It's a chemical warfare thing that takes out the entire universe on well, almost, almost everything. Um, cause obviously there's these survivors, so there must be, uh, small bits of survivors here, there around the world. You know, I mean, they didn't drop these bombs everywhere. Right. Um, but would I recommend this book for you? I, I thought it was, I think it's a good book. Um, I think it can make you very paranoid <laughs> for quite a few reasons. Um, uh, but if you were, if you're going to read it just for like a interesting sort of kind of like an adventure story without going anywhere, did I say what this was about? It was set in the workplace because that's, that's where they were. Although this was a, a crazy, I mean, if it's a 50 story building, well, one of them was a 50 story building. I don't know. There were, it was like a complex, you know, think of like the Google complex or the Facebook complex. It was that sort of place. So it was a, not a small workplace. It was a gigantic workplace, but, um, you know, and, but I mean, it was definitely like, can we survive? And then what do we do next? type of story and it was not I mean it was clearly that trope 
but it wasn't it wasn't something that I've read quite like this before and again a lot of that was the choices in the writing in how they broke up uh, the chapters from one to the next um, and again it just it felt like there, there was this clock the entire time going I mean it was they would refer to it like oh we only have this much food for this much amount of time and this sort of thing um, that were found in the building but I mean it did it felt like there was a clock going it was ticking and it was it, there was you know it was moving forward consistently in this in this book when it wasn't it was jumping around and I thought that was interesting